In the vast maze of the virtual world, I found my escape. As Lyra, my life offline was riddled with social anxieties, making every real-life interaction a feat of courage. Online, though, I was free, free from judgments, free from the scrutinizing eyes of the world, and free to be me. The charm of the digital universe wasn't in the anonymity, but in the connections it promised. One evening, as I was scrolling through a book community, a particular comment caught my attention. I've never met anyone else who appreciates Dostoevsky and graphic novels in the same breath. Kudos. Glancing at the username, I typed a response. Well, there's a first time for everything. Thanks, Damien. Damien and I began to exchange thoughts on books, movies, and soon, life itself. He was the kind of digital companion I hadn't realized I was missing. Witty, insightful, and seemingly kind-hearted. You know, most people just stick to mainstream fiction. It's rare to find someone who delves into the classics and still appreciates modern storytelling. That's because they haven't discovered the magic in both, I replied. Our conversations deepened, and before I knew it, we were sharing more personal details. From images of our favorite coffee spots to tales of past heartbreaks and dreams of the future, Damien and I built a world of our own. I got this vintage typewriter today. I've always wanted one. He sent me a photo. The image showcased a beautifully crafted typewriter, its keys showing signs of age and stories untold. I could imagine Damien sitting in front of it, crafting tales of his own. It's beautiful, I responded, adding, makes me want to share something personal, too. A bit hesitantly, I sent him a photo of my secret haven, a quaint corner in my room adorned with fairy lights, stacked books, and a comfy armchair, which was my reading nook. It's enchanting, Lyra, he wrote back, adding, like a piece of your soul. The vulnerability of that moment solidified our bond. It felt like Damien was no longer just a virtual entity but a real part of my world. Little did I know how this connection would change the trajectory of my digital journey. The hues of dawn painted my room as I reached for my phone, the habit of checking messages ingrained into my morning routine. A sudden notification from Damien popped up. I opened it expecting another anecdote or a shared secret. But the words I read made my heart drop. You've been a lovely friend, Lyra. It'd be a shame if the world saw our chats, don't you think? Especially those pictures. Oh, and I've added a few... enhancements to make them more... interesting. My heart raced, my fingers trembling above the screen. This wasn't the Damien I thought I knew. The memories of shared laughter, heart-to-heart -heart talks and intimate confidences rushed in, colliding with the chilling threat. I typed out a quick response, my mind foggy with panic. What are you talking about? Why would you do this? His reply was swift, a testament to how carefully he had planned this. You'll find out soon enough, unless, of course, you're willing to do a few things for me. The weight of vulnerability in the digital age pressed against me, suffocating my every breath. Here I was, a woman who had always been careful, now trapped in a web spun from trust and betrayal. I don't understand, Damien. I thought we were friends. He sent a manipulated image, one that took my innocent face and placed it in a context I had never been part of. The horror was evident in the pit of my stomach. This is just a sample, darling. Imagine what'll happen when these go viral. A chill ran down my spine. In that moment, I felt utterly alone, threatened by shadows in a space I had once considered safe. The magnitude of the situation overwhelmed me. How had I let my guard down so easily? Taking a deep breath, I decided to respond. This isn't you, Damien. Whatever you think you'll gain from this, it's not worth it. The typing bubble appeared and lingered, building suspense. Maybe you're right, but it's too late now. The game's begun. My screen went black for a moment before a barrage of messages from concerned friends began flooding in. 
They had received anonymous tips, all hinting at a scandal involving me. I felt cornered, unsure of how to fight back. But amidst the despair, a flicker of defiance ignited within me. This wasn't a battle I was willing to lose. Determined, I decided to turn to the one place where I knew I could find allies, the vast community of the virtual world. If Damien could play this game, so could I. And this time, I wouldn't be playing alone. Logging into the forum of Digital Defenders, I penned down a hastily typed post, outlining my predicament. The weight of my predicament made me skeptical about any forthcoming assistance, but within minutes, notifications began flooding in. Hey Lyra, I'm so sorry this is happening to you. Let's figure this out. We're here for you. Let's give Damien a taste of his own medicine. I've been there, Lyra. Let's make sure he doesn't do this to anyone else. The solidarity of the community bolstered my spirits. Among them was Alexa, a digital sleuth who'd assisted numerous members in their battles against online threats. Lyra first. We need to know more about Damien. The more we know, the better we can corner him. I only know what he told me. He's from New York, works in tech. But what if all that was a lie? Digital defenders, assemble. We have a new mission. Let's unmask Damien. Max, one of the forum moderators, posted. The chat rooms buzzed with activity as members brainstormed. Ideas ricocheted back and forth until a plan was solidified. We'll create an irresistible persona for him, someone he can't ignore. Zara, known for her creative strategies, suggested. The community got to work. Ella, an artist, crafted a realistic profile picture, while Kai, a writer, curated a compelling backstory for our fictional persona, Nina. Nina's an IT consultant from San Francisco, loves jazz, late-night coding sessions, and is looking for connections in the tech world, Kai shared. With the persona ready, I initiated contact with Damien. Hey, came across your profile, noticed we're in the same field, would love to connect. A response from Damien wasn't immediate, adding to the suspense, but eventually it arrived. Hey Nina, always great to meet someone from the tech world. What projects are you working on? The trap was set, and the game began. We exchanged messages, with Damien growing more intrigued by the day. As Nina, I played into his interests, discussing tech, sharing personal stories, all while the digital defenders observed and gathered data. Soon, inconsistencies in Damien's stories began to emerge. Last week, he told me he went to a jazz club in Manhattan, I relayed. But according to this post on another profile, he was at a tech convention in Seattle, Alexa pointed out. The pieces of the puzzle began to come together. The more we delved, the clearer the picture became. Damien had multiple online identities. Some he used for professional gain, others for personal connections, and some, like the one I knew, for more sinister intentions. With enough evidence gathered, Max initiated the final phase of our plan. Time to confront him, he typed. As Nina, I set the bait. Hey Damien, fancy meeting up? I'll be in New York next week. The reply was swift. Absolutely, can't wait to meet. It was time to expose the facade. With screenshots of our interactions and evidence of his deceit, we reported him across multiple platforms. The community rallied, ensuring his profiles were flagged and suspended. Watching the dominoes fall, a mixture of relief and gratitude washed over me. The digital defenders hadn't just saved me. They'd thwarted a digital predator, ensuring he couldn't victimize another. As days turned into nights, our virtual war room, a secured chat forum, became my safe haven. Digital defenders became more than just an online community. It was a beacon of hope and strength. Every member came with unique skills and the harmony of their combined abilities was a symphony to witness. Lyra, send me the link to Damien's primary account. Leo, a hacker renowned for his ability to pull digital strings, typed. Within moments of providing the link, the room was flooded with data. Leo had extracted a web of connections related to Damien. Looks like our boy is a busy bee, 
There's a labyrinth of online aliases here. I clicked on the links, my stomach nodding with every discovery. Profile after profile showed a trail of manipulative conversations, some even more menacing than mine. Tara, Sasha, Amara. The list of victims seemed endless. Jade, a data analyst, chimed in. From the pattern, it seems he's been at this for years. Switches accounts every few months, leaving behind a trail of distressed souls. We need to gather evidence, screenshots, messages, anything that can prove his serial predation, Kai said. It was a tedious process. Every member took on an alias, diving deep into the treacherous waters of Damien's deception. My inbox was filled with messages that painted a grim picture of his activities. Look at this, Zara shared, showcasing a conversation where Damien had blackmailed a user over some innocuous pictures, threatening to edit them inappropriately. This is horrifying, Alexa commented. He's not just manipulating, he's mentally torturing these innocent people. With each revelation, the determination to stop him intensified. While Leo and Jade worked on tracing his real identity, Max initiated a mass outreach. Every victim needs to be informed. They should know they're not alone. Our campaign began. Members reached out to those affected by Damien, offering support and guidance. The response was overwhelming. I thought I was the only one. One of the victims, Sarah replied. I've been living in fear for months. Another message read, He said he knew where I lived. I had to delete my entire online existence. But not every victim was willing to revisit their trauma. Some doors remained closed, the scars too fresh, the wounds too deep. We have enough evidence. We can take this to the authorities, Leo stated. But would it be enough? Digital crimes especially those shrouded in anonymity, were not oriously difficult to prosecute. As we pondered our next move, Zara dropped a bombshell. I found him. The real Damien. Or should I say, Daniel Thompson from New Jersey. Looks like our predator has a physical address. Silence echoed in the chat, the magnitude of the discovery weighing heavily. We had unmasked the monster revealing a seemingly ordinary man with a dark, digital double life. What do we do now? I typed, my fingers trembling over the keys. The answer was unanimous. We bring him to justice. The digital war room was abuzz with activity. Screens lit up with conversations, strategies, and the shared anticipation of a well-laid trap. Amidst the group was Eva, a woman with the kind of steely determination that made you believe mountains could be moved. She was ready to be our bait, to become Nina. Okay, I've set up the account. The username is Nina Loves Sunsets. Profile picture is from that stock website. Seems believable enough. Eva's fingers flew over the keys, her tone more of a statement than a question. Remember, Ava, we need to lure him in, not scare him away. Make it authentic. Keep us updated and for heaven's sake, stay safe. Max chimed in. Don't worry, I've got this. Sending him a friend request now. Eva had a smirk that sent shivers down my spine. Our screens lit up a moment later with a notification. Damien had accepted Nina's friend request. And the game begins, I whispered. Almost immediately, a message popped up on Eva's screen. It was Damien. Hey there, Nina. I couldn't help but notice your love for sunsets. It's quite a coincidence. I have a thing for them, too. Eva, or rather Nina, typed back with feigned enthusiasm. Oh, really? There's this magic about the golden hour. The world seems so... different, you know? As the conversation flowed, the two appeared to click instantly. Damien was playing his usual charming self throwing in flirtatious comments here and there. Eva was toe-to-toe -to -toe with him, keeping up the pretense, while also dropping subtle hints to reel him in further. Over the course of several days, the messages grew more intimate. Damien began opening up about his life, or at least the fictional one he presented online. So, Nina, what do you think about... deeper connections? I mean, beyond the regular chats and stuff. 
Eva feigned curiosity. What do you have in mind? In a hushed tone, Zara advised, Be careful with what you share, Ava. We need him to slip, not you. While the digital defenders watched with batted breath, Eva continued her intricate dance with Damien. Each conversation became a maze, with Damien believing he was leading Nina deeper inside, unaware that he was the one being ensnared. As the days turned into nights, our chat logs with Damien grew. He began sharing his fantasies, dreams, and even began hinting at some of his past exploits, though without naming any victims. Leo pointed out, It's only a matter of time before he feels comfortable enough to start making threats. We need to be ready. The climax approached sooner than expected. One evening, Damien sent a message, the tone darker, more menacing. Nina, I have something that might interest you. It's a picture, not of sunsets, but of someone you might know. Want to see? We knew he was about to start his game, about to show his true colors. My heart raced, but Eva was calm. Sure, why not? But only if you promise it's interesting, she typed with a teasing edge. It was the beginning of Damien's downfall, and he didn't even know it. Surrounded by the soft glow of computer screens and the occasional rhythmic tapping of keyboards, the atmosphere in the room grew tense with each passing message. The conversations between Eva and Damien became our daily ritual, our shared obsession. The weight of what we were doing pressed down on us, but there was no turning back. You know, Nina, you're different. There's something about you that makes me want to share things I haven't told anyone. As Eva maneuvered the conversation, subtly steering Damien towards revelations, I watched from over her shoulder, heart pounding. The dance of trust and deceit was a delicate one, and Eva was masterfully leading. I've always been a good listener, Damien. You can tell me anything, she responded, her words dripping with feigned sincerity. Damien hesitated, but eventually began to open up. Not everything in my life has been sunshine and roses, you know. I've made mistakes. Big ones. The room was silent, save for the hum of computers and the deep breaths of those watching the conversation unfold. Eva probed gently. We all have. What's been weighing on you? Over the next few messages, Damien began revealing aspects of his life. How he lived in a small apartment, worked a dead-end job, and had few friends. He spoke about his loneliness and how it led him to create different online personas to feel validated. With each revelation, Eva nodded at me, signaling that we were on the right track. One evening, as the skies outside darkened, Damien dropped a bombshell. I have these photos, you know. Pictures of women I've talked to. Some of them, I've... altered. Gives me a thrill. My gut churned. The predator was unveiling himself, and it was more disturbing than I'd imagined. Eva kept her cool, typing slowly, choosing her words with precision. That sounds dangerous, Damien. Why would you risk that? With a dark chuckle, he replied, It's all about power, Nina. Knowing I have something they desperately want back. That's the rush. While Eva kept Damien engaged, other members of the Digital Defenders worked tirelessly, recording every word, every image he sent. Our tech expert, Jasper, had developed a program that traced the origins of these images, verifying their authenticity. As days turned into nights, our evidence pile grew. Damien's threats, the manipulated images, his admissions, all carefully logged, time-stamped, and backed up. We even found connections to dark web forms, where he bragged about his exploits. You won't believe the collection I have, Nina. But you... you're special. I would never do that to you. Damien messaged one night. The cold dread in my spine was a stark contrast to Eva's calm demeanor. With a grim smile, she typed, That's sweet of you, Damien. We all knew the climax was approaching. With every piece of evidence, every confession Damien made, we grew bolder. And as the net tightened around Damien, I couldn't help but feel a sense of vindication. The trap was almost ready to be sprung, and Damien was walking right into it, blinded by his arrogance. Hey, Damien. Long time no chat. 
His reply came faster than I had anticipated. Well, well, if it isn't Lyra, have you missed me? I've been busy. Did you get my package? A pause. I could almost see him, sitting there, a taut string of tension, contemplating my words. What package? The one filled with evidence. Evidence of your online harassment, your collection of manipulated photos, the threats. This time, the pause was longer, and when he finally responded, I could feel the desperation seeping through his words. You're bluffing, I chuckled. Am I? Would you like to see the pile of digital evidence we've compiled against you? It's ready to be sent to authorities, and guess what? We've traced back some of the images you've sent, including their original sources. Cybercrime units would love to have a look. His panic erupted like a volcano, spewing words of frantic denial. You can't prove anything. Ah, but that's where you're wrong, Damien. With the help of my tech-savvy friends, we've managed to trace your multiple online personas. They all lead back to one place, you. As I stared at the screen, my heart pounding but resolute, his next message popped up. Okay, okay, what do you want? What do I want? It's simple, Damien. You will delete all the manipulated content, every threat you've sent, every fake image. Not just of me, but of all the women you've exploited. And if I do that, what then? Then you walk away. No more online stalking. No more threats. And if we ever hear about you doing anything like this again, all the evidence we've compiled goes straight to the authorities. You'll become intimately acquainted with the inside of a jail cell. The air was thick with tension, each of us holding our breath, waiting. Finally, his reply came. Fine. I'll delete everything. You'll never hear from me again. I grinned. Good choice. But remember, the internet is more than just a mask you can hide behind. It's also a magnifying glass that can find the smallest stain on anyone's character. You'd do well to remember that. His response was brief the panic now replaced by resignation. You've made your point. With a mixture of triumph and relief, I looked around at my comrades, my fellow digital defenders. Eva gave me a solemn nod, and Jasper patted my back. We had done it, but there was more yet to be done. To ensure Damien kept his word, we would continue to monitor his activities discreetly. And Damien? What? Consider this your only warning. There won't be a second. He didn't reply, but he didn't need to. The silence that stretched between us was filled with unspoken acknowledgments. He had lost, and he knew it. We had turned his twisted game on its head, ensnaring the predator in a trap of his own making. And while the digital battleground would continue to be fraught with peril, for now, one more demon had been exorcised. Let's give him a taste of his own medicine. Eva's voice was cold, determined. I could see the fire in her eyes, mirroring the flames of anger in each member of our group. But he said he would delete everything, Jasper interjected, trying to play devil's advocate. Do we really want to stoop to his level? Jasper, this isn't about revenge. It's about protection, I responded. Think about all the other women who might fall into his trap. What if he just moves to another platform, another identity? We have to expose him for who he is. And we will. Eva replied with determination. I've got the domain name secured. TheRealDamien.com We put everything there. The threats, the images, his multiple identities. Everything. The chatter within the Digital Defenders Forum was a cacophony of agreement. This is bigger than just Lyra or any one of us, a member named Zoe pointed out. I've seen his kind before. They only stop when they're exposed to the light. I've got the website design ready, Leo, our resident web designer, piped up. Clean, straightforward, just the facts. No embellishments. This is about truth. We need to be careful, Eva added her fingers flying over her keyboard. We need disclaimers, legal checkpoints. We can't give him any room to claim defamation. Absolutely. 
Jasper Chimadin. I've contacted a friend who's a lawyer. She's agreed to give the website a once-over, make sure everything's on the op and op. Over the next few hours, we meticulously compiled, curated, and placed the evidence. There were screenshots, voice recordings, manipulated images juxtaposed with their originals. Everything laid out in an organized, easy-to-follow manner. I think it's ready, Leo whispered, almost reverently. There was a collective pause, each of us taking a deep breath. Make it live, I said. As soon as the website went public, our community spread the word. Tweets, shares, forum posts, and messages went out like an unstoppable wave. Within hours, our website received thousands of hits. I've been getting messages from other communities, Zoe said. They want to help amplify our message. They've faced monsters like Damien before. Good. The more, the merrier. Eva's satisfaction was evident. TheRealDamien.com is trending, Jasper announced, astonishment clear in his voice. Suddenly my inbox pinged with a new message. It was from a user I didn't recognize. Daisy Flower. Thank you. Her message began. I was one of Damien's victims two years ago. I thought I was alone. Seeing this, knowing that someone finally stopped him. I can't tell you what it means to me. I shared the message with the group, my eyes misty. This is why we did it, Eva whispered. The weight of what we'd accomplished settled in. For every user like Daisy Flower, there were likely dozens more who'd suffered silently. But now, they weren't alone. The digital defenders had given them a voice, and in doing so, had stripped Damien of his power. He's finished, Leo murmured, relief evident in his voice. More than that, I said, my fingers hovering over the keyboard. He's unmasked. We can't let this just remain online. Eva's voice trembled slightly over the call. He needs to face real-world consequences for his actions. Agreed, Jasper responded. The website exposed him, but he might just retreat and reinvent himself. We've got enough evidence. We should report him to the authorities. The chatter grew louder, and I could feel the collective agreement in our group. The decision was obvious. But the weight of it pressed on my chest. Are we sure about this? I whispered, voicing the concern that bubbled under the surface. It means coming out from behind our screens, revealing our identities. There was a brief silence before Zoe spoke up. I'll do it. I'll go with you, Lyra. We need to stand up, not just for ourselves, but for every daisy flower out there. Heartened by her support, I felt a new surge of determination. All right, I murmured. Let's do this. Eva immediately started organizing our collective evidence, ensuring everything was in order. Every screenshot, every voice note, she listed. We need to be meticulous. There's no room for error. Within hours, several of us had compiled dossiers of evidence. It was a chilling reminder of Damien's extensive online treachery. Some members, including myself, also penned down our personal accounts. As we approached the police station, my nerves threatened to get the better of me. The brick building loomed large, symbolizing a world far removed from our digital battleground. Deep breaths, Zoe whispered, sensing my unease. The interior was stark and fluorescent lights buzzed overhead. A stern-faced officer regarded us as we approached the front desk. Can I help you? Eva, always the most eloquent among us, took the lead. Yes, we'd like to report a cybercrime. Multiple cybercrimes, actually. The officer's brows raised, and he motioned us into a side room. We laid out our evidence, the weighty dossiers making a soft thud as they were placed on the table. This is about Damien, Zoe began, her voice shaking slightly. We've gathered evidence, digital footprints, testimonies, everything you'd need to find him. Another officer, Detective Harris, joined us, his sharp eyes scanning our files. The room was silent, save for the soft rustling of papers and the occasional click of a pen. This is extensive, Harris finally said. We've had reports before, but nothing like this. This, this is solid. So what happens now? I dared to ask, my voice barely above a whisper. Now, Detective Harris replied, we find Damien. Days turned into weeks, 
but our relentless pursuit, combined with the weight of our evidence, bore fruit. Damien's real identity was uncovered, a 32-year-old IT consultant. News of his arrest spread throughout our community. The feeling was bittersweet. On one hand, the monster was unmasked, his reign of terror over, but the scars he left on his victims remained. It's over, Eva's voice crackled over the call. He's been caught. It's just the beginning, I whispered, a somber note in my voice. For us, for every victim out there, the healing starts now. Zoe's voice was soft, filled with emotion. But we did it, Lyra, together. And as I looked around at the faces of my friends, my allies in this digital war, I realized she was right. We had faced a monster and emerged victorious together.